Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. And yes, I did just finish filming the lookbook in the other room, so you'll have to forgive my indecency here in my robe. But I wanted to show you how I made the black and red color block dress with tulip sleeves and a little bit of a high collar. Kind of a fun neckline on that one. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. And we begin with some blank alphanumeric paper and my bodice block pattern, my standard bodice block pattern here in tracing the front along a straight line here on the right hand side of the screen and you can see I already have added a half inch of seam allowance down the center front as well but I'll just trace in my usual darts to start with here and then we can move things around and kind of decide on a few style decisions so of course this is going to have a princess seam but it's that kind of princess seam that comes up into the neckline so I'm going to draw that in here and uh, give a first crack at it basically from the apex up into the neckline about one inch out from the center front of the neckline up here. Then I am going to add a shoulder yoke to this as well. So let me just sketch that in here and make some decisions about that. Sketch it in again, basically. And I'm just trying to decide exactly on my style lines here before I start cutting things out. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit actually. And then these darts, of course, will be eliminated within the princess seam. So let's cut everything out so we can do that. Just go ahead and speed this up while I cut this out. And uh, for those of you who are new around here and are uh, inquiring about these scissors, I do have a link to these, I think, in the description. If I don't, I will add one in because I do get a lot of questions about these paper shears. Mine are just from my fashion school days, but they do have similar ones at Atlas Levy where I get my paper like this. So I will link to those below. And here I'm just cutting away my waist dart and then closing, slashing and spreading, or slashing and closing basically, my side dart here. I'll just cut away the excess. And now I have a princess seamed pattern, basically. Um, you did see me do this in the princess seam uh, video that I did recently. So I can put a card up to the video where I show how to do various princess seams. Um, and this was, I think the last style I showed in that one up into the neckline like this. I show a couple of different styles of princess seam in that video. If you are new to adding style lines to the front of the bodice like this, it's uh, even easier to do the back. So you'll see that in a minute, but I'm just adding seam allowance because of course I cut the pattern apart in order to put it back together. I'm going to need seam allowance. And then I was thinking, really, I kind of want this to be a little bit narrower, this front panel. And so I overlapped this where it would be sewn together. That way I can draw on a new shape. So I'm just gonna draw this a little bit even pointier towards the waist here. I'm gonna cut that apart and then I'll add seam allowance to this area again because I layered the seam allowance closed down here. So I will need to add it back again. Hopefully this makes any sense. I'm sorry to myself also for not having drawn the line I really wanted the first time. And again, if you didn't watch a couple of my recent videos, I mentioned that I had some skin situations going on in my arm, so that's why I have lots of bandages in this footage from a few weeks ago. But I'm on the mend now, no worries. Just label this a little bit. I was calling this the CD dress because to me, these style lines look a little bit like a, a coffin kind of shape, so it's the coffin dress, or at least the first coffin dress. I do actually weirdly plan another one for October, but we'll get to that later. But I will cut my yoke apart here and add seam allowance to that as well. Of course, anytime I cut into the interior of my patterns, I need to add seam allowance to be able to sew these sections back together. So again, I'll add seam allowance to my yoke as well here. And I'll have my three main pieces of the front here. And you can see where that dart fullness went. You can really see it is up into the neckline and still at the waist here. Um, these style lines just become, you know, the darts in some ways. And here I've just taped my pattern back together a little bit because it makes sense to uh, try, trace the facing while I'm here. So I'm just gonna trace the neckline and the shoulder of this a little. And I couldn't decide how deep I wanted my neckline to be at this point, so I um, just left this the full length of the front bodice, but you'll see later it gets trimmed down. But I'm just going to trace a two and a half inch wide facing. The collar of this dress, um, because it will have a standing collar around the back and halfway across the front, you'll see what I mean when we get there, um, this will be finished at the front neckline with the facing and then the rest of the way within that stand collar. So you'll see that later when I put everything together. I'm just tracing this long facing here that does not need to be this long. But, oh well, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, I can't think through everything <laughs> at the start, weirdly enough. Sometimes my brain works better than other days. Yes, you can just come down two and a half inches from here and cut it off, but I'm gonna do it later. Anyway, this is my front pattern. I can set that aside for now. Let me grab a tracing of my back pattern here and just draw in my dart. So here's my bodice back. And again, I'm going to make this have that same sort of princess seam up into the neckline along the back here, but I do need to raise my back neckline because on this tracing of my back, it is just too low, so I'm always raising it. But I'll just draw a line from the point of the dart here on the back up into the neckline, just like I did on the front. And again, I'm going to move this dart over just a little bit uh, so it's a little bit narrower back here. But instead of doing it afterwards, I'm gonna do it now. So I'll move the dart over, I don't know, it's maybe like 
3 eighths of an inch, like so. Uh, move that dart over so now this dart is chilling over here where I want it, so it narrows the waist of the back a tiny bit. I could have done this more, actually, but I like to keep style lines away from the center back. I just like to keep the center back as clean as possible, usually, because that is where my zipper is going. I can do a little bit of labeling here, and then once again, I've drawn in my shoulder yoke up there. But I'm just going to cut the whole thing out here, cut this out at the waist, and then I can start cutting these pieces apart. Again, I'll have three pieces for the back. Um, I'm going to cut out this center back piece along this style line I've drawn in from the dart, like so. Cut off that dart fullness, we no longer need it. Goodbye, it will now like be encompassed within this seam. You can see, if I hold it closed down here, it almost makes it go into the neckline. It's all about moving dart fullness around the apex on the front and in the back here, this is kind of like a pivot point is what this would be called. And I am just sh um, shortening my back length a little bit at the waist and gradating that into the side. That's just a fit change I need on this uh, bodice block that I have to make in the next tracing. But now that everything's cut apart, including my back yoke and stuff, I can go ahead again, add seam allowance, luckily at 800 times speed. Sadly, in reality, I cannot add seam allowance at 800 times speed, but that's all right. Part of the process here. All right, one last bit along this style line here in my side back, like so. And then once again, I um, don't need a back facing back here, but I will be doing a collar, so I'm just going to measure that back neckline. We're going to tee off a square line here. Um, my collars are usually three inches for the back, uh, and then like that's where the shoulder is going to be. So go up three inches like so, and then four inches for the front. And then you're going to come up a half inch, um, and that's like where this needs to tilt up. I have a video showing how to do the stand collar in much more detail, and I did it really sloppily here, so I'm just going to link you up to my shirt video where I show how to do a stand collar here. I have done stand collars a couple of times here on the channel. Um, the only difference with this is instead of it ending at the center front, it's going to end where the black part of the dress stops, so it's just not going to... The I guess it's shorter than the last couple of inches of the front. Hopefully that makes any sense. And yes, I am drafting this on the fold as if it will close in the center back, even though I have a center back closure on this dress. So later you'll watch me cut this collar in half. So really the whole, the collar situation on this, very sloppy, but it's not like difficult to add a stand collar onto a dress pattern. Um, it's the same as when I add them onto my shirt pattern. So if you want to watch me do sand collars again with a little bit more clarity, check out this video. I'll put it in a card. And then I'll start working on the skirt pattern for this. I could have exaggerated this a little bit more, I think. I kind of like toned it down from the last time I did a skirt like this, and now I think I need to find somewhere in the middle ground. But just tracing in my pencil skirt front, like so. I'm gonna grab my front panel pattern here to mark where that red panel, it will be red eventually, ends here. And I'm going to swoop from the side up to that mark, making sure I swoop through the dart point of this first dart. So I'm just gonna draw in a curve here from the side kind of below the hip, and then I will be able to eliminate this first dart, and then the second one I will just leave chilling inside this panel. I'm going to cut this a little bit out. I'm going to add an inch to my hem here, just so that this is a little bit longer. But I will cut out the rest of this, and then I will draw in the center front panel, just because I want to be able to look at it straight on instead of from the side like this. It fits better on camera like that, but this is how I can see what the shape of it will look like a little bit more. So I'm coming about two and a half inches away from the center front, so the finished center panel will be about five inches wide. Um, I'm not really thinking about measurements while doing this. I'm just looking at it and kind of drawing in what I would like. But I will cut this again apart. We have three pieces here, similar to how the bodices are only three pieces. So I guess it's just kind of how this worked out. But I'm going to cut these apart. And then again, I will need to add seam allowance to be able to put them all back together. But I can cut down this dart down to that point and pivot it closed because we will not need to sew in that dart anymore because it will be done within the style lines again, just like how the princess seam helps on the bodice. This seam here is allowing me to create the panels where I want them. And like magic, I will add seam allowance to everything, just like so. Now I'm going to do the same set of operations to the back here. So I've just traced my standard pencil skirt block back, put in my one inch zipper allowance here, add that inch to the hem again, and then draw in my darts. And once again, I'm going to draw in those three panels, um, that curve out to the hip, and I'm going to grab my bodice back center back piece here to make sure that this does line up with the start perfect and then i'll grab the side skirt piece from the front that we just did so i can make this the same depth at the hip on the side there so i'm just going to curve this up to this dart point and i am going to end up curving off a tiny bit from this dart point back here but it's enough that it's not going to make a huge difference to the fit 
um, just so I can have a nicer curve here. And I'll be able to, again, eliminate that first dot up here. Again, I'm grabbing the front as a reference here to do the center panel. This one's probably a bit wider. Maybe it's around the same, two and a half. It's about five inches in the back. This curve is rather subtle up here, though. But, yeah, what are you going to do? But, again, start labeling so I don't get turned around too badly here. And then, again, I can cut these three pieces apart, close that dart on that side piece, and add seam allowance. Like so. This is the same sort of skirt um, style I did e earlier in the year and it, for a dress that uh, I called the Space Queen dress. You may have seen it on Instagram um, because I did make that dress on Patreon, but this is a very similar skirt to that. So this is how I would do the color blocking for that dress. Here, I'll put a picture of it. This one. Uh, same kind of color blocking here for this skirt today that I used in that one. So the only difference being I had some metallic panels going on in that, but similar ideas here. But with my skirt back finish as well. I can set that aside and work on the sleeve. Oh, except for I already have my sleeve pattern. This is just the long tulip sleeve from, again, my tulip sleeve demonstration video that I did earlier in the year. So I can put a card up to that as well. And does that mean I'm out of cards already? Darn it. Well, you know, you can find a lot of things on my uploads page if you want to search through there. I've made a lot of videos over the years. Hundreds, actually, now at this point, weirdly enough. And thank goodness I've gotten better at it over the years. So some of my older videos, to me now, are quite embarrassing. But that's, what are you going to do, you know? But now for these pieces, I do still have some darts in these side skirt pieces. So I'm just transferring those over onto the back of the black sateen here. And I am just using white colored pencil for that. I prefer Prismacolor pencils, which are like fancy colored pencils for this. I have had a couple people recommending some sort of a, like an erasable or like in invisible ink pens, um, which that sounds all well and nice, but I use mostly black or dark fabric. So anything with ink doesn't tend to show up. Um, when I use a heavily textured black fabric, I will usually use a white milky gel pen because I need something opaque. Uh, I can't have anything that's like a transparent ink or pen. That's why I use colored pencils because it's opaque and I mostly use dark purple, dark green, <laughs> dark blue, black fabric. So because I work mostly in jewel tones, something opaque is what works best for me. It doesn't bother me to have a little bit of colored pencil on the inside of my garments. It's just not something I'm troubled by, you know? But let me just go ahead and grab my sleeves here. Now, I did cut out a uh, lining for these sleeves, and I cut it out of the red sateen. So the outside of the sleeves will be black, and the inside of the sleeves will be red. Um, it'll be like a subtle detail that you may not see from far away, of course, but I think it'll be nice to have a little bit of red peeking out from my tulip sleeves. And I do just want to line these up along the hems of the sleeves. This outer curved edge is the hem of the sleeve. And I will just sew those together first and press them all cleanly so that these hems are finished, and then I can work on the top, like, arm side of the sleeve, or sleeve cap of the sleeve, which looks very strange on this, later on. But let me go ahead and start sewing my darts for those skirt pieces over here on the machine. Just got four darts to sew here. Again, I start at the large end of the dart, sew off the tip, and then tie the threads shut, just how I was taught to do darts at the fashion program I happened to go to my freshman year, and it's just stuck with me, you know? We all have different methods that we prefer, and this is mine for darts, using a small stitch length, tying the ends. And then again, I'm going to hem those sleeves by sewing the uh, lining and fashion fabric together. Blech. I can't think anymore. I just had a cup of coffee. You would think that I would be starting to wake up, but I haven't been sleeping well. So really, it's just all up in the air. My eyes still hurt because I had eyeshadow on yesterday, which is unfortunate. And I did actually, <laughs> speaking of eyeshadow, I actually caught the Cleona eyeshadow sale or like restock this week. So I bought more eyeshadow. I had a tax return, <clears throat> even though eyeshadow causes me pain because I love eyeshadow, even if my eyes don't. So it's new, new exciting multi-chromes coming to me soon. Well, within a month, hopefully, from that uh, Can Canadian indie brand, which Cleona makes the best multi-chromes. Cleona, Terra Moons, Davina, all the indie brands making the good stuff. I will link to Cleona below because if you haven't seen their eyeshadows and you like sparkly stuff and you don't mind waiting a long shipping time, because usually their shipping times are long. It's worth it, though. So worth it. Anyway, I'm just hemming those sleeves. It's not very exciting. I clipped my curves. I turned everything right side out, giving it a nice press from the inside on the red side here. These are like the Louboutin shoe of a dress, where, <laughs> like, the inside of it is going to be red. And just make sure this is all pressed nice and smooth here, and I'll deal with the rest of it later. Now, for the rest of my pieces, before I can start sewing stuff together, I do not have to serge... I uh, do have to serge the raw edges that are going to be exposed on the inside of the garment because this will not be lined. Just gonna go ahead and serge those. And so here are my back skirt panels for one side. I'm just going to pin that long, uh, like, vertical seam 
here. It has a slight curve at the top here, but not much. No problem. And I'll stitch this with a half inch seam allowance in the machine. Pin the other side the exact same way here. And then I will even do the fronts. I'm kind of back processing the skirt first before I get to the bodice this time. Sometimes I start with the bodice. Sometimes I start with the skirt. Eh. So this is the front, center front um, panel here. And you can see what I mean. It's kind of got a little bit of a gothic-y coffin inspired shape. This is my uh, summer coffin dress. I do have a fall 1940s like draped coffin dress idea as well. Just subtly influencing or infusing my wardrobe with a little bit more of a gothic tendency. As I get older, I really lean into my gothic desires, which is funny because when I was a kid, I really wanted to be like a traditional Victorian goth kid, but my mom was not having it. So now that I'm old, I think every year I realize more and more that I can just lean into my like dark witchy tendencies and no one can stop me now. It's perfect. Now I have villain hair and I just want to dress to match, honestly. But those seams again are slightly curved, so I will go ahead and clip them as I press them smooth and open over here. And uh, then I will top stitch this from the outside with black thread as well. I did make a color block dress. I've made a color, a couple of color block dresses where I switched to have the contrast color of thread on the other side of the seam. So like for this, I would use black thread on the red and then red thread on the black. But this time I just use black thread for everything because I was not in the mood to switch thread that much. Sometimes I don't mind and sometimes it's a step too far. So just black thread on all of this using the narrow side of my presser foot here just as a guide to do that top stitching and making sure my seam allowance is pressed open and flat on the inside while I do this because that is the whole point of doing the top stitching anyhow is to keep that seam allowance nice and flat on the inside. And then here on the front I'm going to add on my uh, like curved side panels here so this is kind of like the princess seam of the skirt as it were in some ways. So I'm just making sure again all my seam allowance is kept open and that this curve is gently eased into the like the convex and the concave curve are gently eased together. No trouble here because there isn't a ton of fit going into this curve. Um, it's just mostly a style line for the looks of it and then that tiny bit of dark fullness is up in the waist of this but not a ton so should be no trouble here. Once again I do need to clip this curve though and uh, on one side of it you'll need to put like snips and the other side you'll need to have like triangles cut out so see me doing that here too. Just how convex and concave curves work. Same for over the bust usually as well. The difference is on this particular princess seam that I have for this garment you can just put little snips in, I think. You can get away with it. I'll see later, I can't remember. But I really like this princess seam that goes from the waist through the apex, of course, and then up into the neckline. I really find it like easier to, I don't know, there's less goes wrong with it for some reason, I think. I, I worry about it less. This fit seems to just work, which is nice. But once I have the skirt fronts uh, all constructed and the skirt backs all constructed, I can force sew them together at the side seams. So I'm lining up where those side panels meet down here at the hip and then waist down to the hem, pin these things together and I can sew the sides of the skirt together and then the skirt will be finished. I'll set it aside for now as I work on the bodice, beginning with the bodice back here. Now for when I make color blocked or panel dresses, I really like laying everything out almost like puzzle pieces kind of over here on the blue table it's to avoid doom, honestly. So just everything so I can get this all like right side or wrong side up, whichever and lay everything out. Now I have all my edges surged, you can see. And um, that's what happened in that cut there. I went, ran all this through the serger. But just a top-down view of this helps me to not get confused and to stay focused on what needs to go where first and not get turned around. So I really, I mean, I guess if you're like, your brain works at a higher functionality than mine, perhaps you don't need to do something like this, but for me, it really helps. And I'm just sewing my shoulder yokes onto the side back pieces first. Um, you may notice that these are both black sateen and you won't really be able to see this seam. You're right. Um, I could have done some texture blocking here. It's more just like I think in the future I might want to use this color block in a more color blocked way. Um, so I just made the pattern with that in mind because in the future I might make a black and white version of this dress or something with a little bit more texture like doing a faux leather for the central pieces and something matte for the rest. So just keeping that in mind as I go here. But I did the shoulder pieces first and then I will sew my princess seam for the back here, which of course, again, not a ton of shaping is happening here, but it's got a little bit of a curve to ease together over the like curve of the back here. And I even just put in a couple of like quarter inch clips just to help ease that in and pin that together. I am using my fine silk dritz pins for this. Constantly, uh, you know, finding these bent on the floor. <clears throat> Someone asked me actually how I keep my work areas tidy and it's just so amusing to me because 
the bits you see on camera, my if they ever look tidy, it is all uh, clever movie magic because I all the little triangles you see me clip out here like this over the bust and uh, all the little bits of thread and stuff like that, I just put them on the floor. And then I have to sweep or vacuum once the project is over. But like when I'm in the swing of things, all that stuff just gets thrown onto the floor. So um, that's why my cats are not allowed in my sewing room. It's because there's thread everywhere. It's, I mean, there's plenty for them to get involved in in here. That would be bad. I'm just top stitching this uh, princess seam in the back. But um, mostly it's so that they don't get around little threads and bits of fluff that they, they could eat. Um, because thread and string is actually very bad if a cat ingests that because it can get uh, cause havoc inside. So that's why my cats are never allowed in my sewing room. But here's one back. Here's another back. The backs are now done. I can set those aside as well with the skirt and work on the fronts. Well, I would work on the fronts, but I'm making a collar first here. So again, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the sleeves where the outside of the collar will be black and the inside is going to be red here. Both these sateens, by the way, are from Joann's. I really like their cotton sateen from their like bottom weights collection. Sadly, it doesn't come in a ton of colors, but I quite like their dark red and the black. But I'll just pin that collar right sides together along the top edge, leaving that last half inch free. You can see at the top of the screen there, that last half inch is free. And on the other side, I will leave the last half inch free because that is where it's gonna connect onto the bodice itself. So I just need this last half inch right there. Uh, but I can otherwise clip the curves and turn this right side out. And yes, again, this is one collar and I technically will need this collar to be in too, so you'll see me cut it apart later when I finally realize that. Luckily, it was not a catastrophic mistake. I was just able to cut this in half and use it as is. Not a problem. But I will go ahead and press this and use my knitting needle here to help me get my curves all zhuzhed where they need to be, hopefully smooth. Again, you're never gonna get a nice curve on something like this, which this is not even a very nice curve that I've done here without clipping the inside so make sure you do that or trim it really narrow but depending on your your fabric you know if it's gonna fray easily you might not want to trim too narrow on the inside eh. um, you can use interfacing as well of course I'm using a cotton sateen here it's a very stable fabric it's pretty tightly woven um, and it's not thick but it's definitely not on the thin side I would say it's a very medium weight fabric so I'm not worried about it coming apart on me and I didn't interface that because it's already stiff enough and then over here back on the blue patterning table of doom I can lay out my pieces for the front so this does have a center front seam here, so I'm going to be making the left and the right here. And once again, I will start with those shoulder yoke pieces. Um, well, I surged everything, and then I started with those shoulder yoke pieces. I'm going to pin those on to my side fronts, like so. Again, for this particular dress, you'll have to be up close to me to be able to tell that there even is a shoulder yoke here, because they'll blend right together. But in the future, I may use that color block in a more dramatic way, hopefully. But then once those are on, I can go ahead and do the front princess seam here. Once again, I like having the like flatter piece on the top. I don't know, you can pin this from either side. This was, again, kind of a weird princess seam. It's not a traditional princess seam. It, if anyone has figured out what this one is called, again, let me know. Because there's the armhole princess, the shoulder princess, and then into the neckline. Is it a neckline princess? You know, I, I, I guess so. I'm just sewing over the bust here. Everything uh, is pretty easy. This, this is the easiest princess seam to sew together by far. Um, so if you're intimidated by them, I recommend this up into the neckline situation. But I'll just do both sides while I'm over here at the machine. Again, half inch seam allowance, as always. You can see I'm putting my hand between the two pieces just to make sure that nothing's getting puckered or getting sewn down where it shouldn't be. But again, I can go ahead and clip over the curve of the bust here, like so. Clip out my triangles. Again, just sweep those buddies right to the floor. That's why I have a little tiny hand vacuum uh, down here. I'm more of the like create mess and chaos as I go and then clean up everything at the end. Um, my dad is much better about this. Like when he cooks and stuff, he's definitely will clean as he goes. I'm more of like an absolutely chaotic situation. And then you have to deal with the aftermath. That's more my process, sadly enough. I'm a rather, rather a, a messy person, really, in reality. Not a dirty person, but I can be quite messy. I do like organizing, but... It's not my natural state when I'm in the flow state of creating something or making stuff. I don't stop to clean, <laughs> sadly enough. But just like on the back, I am top stitching that princess seam. Now my fronts are together. I will sew from where I want the neckline to open up down. Of course, this meets at the center front. It's more, mm, like a neckline slash slit. Like if I wanted to put frog closures or hooks or any sort of closure at the top of this neckline, it would meet at the center still. Um, it's just open like a slashed open as opposed to V. 
And now you can see I've trimmed my facing so that it is only two and a half inches past where that neckline ends. And I will go ahead and sew this right sides together. And that means I, because of the center front seam here on both the facing and the um, garment itself, I can go ahead and sew that past the neckline even like so. And I will turn this. And again, I'm only, uh, I don't know, facing the red part of this up at the neckline because the rest of this is going to be encased inside the collar. So up here where this point is, which I need to put another clip in here probably, um, I'm only facing the red area up to the, like the princess seam. And then beyond that, it'll be in a collar. So I need to put a little snip in there actually. So you'll see that in a moment. So like right here, I can actually just put a snip in because that is where the collar is going to be attached. So I'll do that on both the facing boop, and the garment itself because past here, this excess is going to be encased in collar. So that's why I don't even have a back facing for this. It's just going to be faced up to the shoulder. Um, but the collar encases the raw edges for everything else. But I can sew the other side the same way. I just did this one at a time because everything has a center front seam. And that neckline again is a little bit curved. So I'm just putting a couple clips in there using my knitting needle to not knit. I'll tell you that because I am terrible at knitting. It's uh, there's like a level of patience and like, I don't know, you're a certain kind of math brain I think you have to have for knitting because I lose count of stitches or like what if I'm supposed to be purling or knitting so quickly that <laughs> there's just no chance for me. Um, so I am a terrible knitter, sadly. I can knit, I just can't do it successfully. And I will go ahead and top stitch the center front now that it is sewn together also all the way down. And you can see the top up here where I put those clips in so I have this extra little seam allowance sticking out beyond the rest of the neckline. That's where my collar will go. But before I can put my collar on, I need to sew my shoulder seams. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So the front to the back at the shoulder. I'm not working on the sides yet. Usually I do the side seams and the shoulder seams at the same time, but for this, I was just gonna finish the collar and everything first. So I sewed those together, give those a quick press here. And then unfortunately my cinematography is about to get extra terrible. Please forgive me. Here's where I'm noticing, oh, this needs to be in two pieces. Yeah, duh kid. <sighs> Why does this cut on the fold when the center back is gonna have a zipper? I don't know, probably because you're not thinking clearly. Let's just cut that in half and see if it works. And I measured it and it, and it will. Nice. <laughs> Excellent news. But now that I have this in two pieces, one for each side, I can go ahead and pin this on the um, excess of the neckline here. Now, of course, I, you know, a lot of times when I'm sewing, I will do one side first and then I will film the other side <laughs> or like vice versa. And so I filmed this once for this side and uh, I'm completely off camera. This is not me zoomed in here. I'm just not on the, I, so this is a terrible shot. I'm sorry. I'm pinning this onto the seam allowance. Uh, this is the same way I would do a collar normally. Uh, it's just doing it individually one side at a time. Um, again, check out that shirt video for a little bit more info on stand collars. This is um, probably not the world's best demonstration of this, but I'm just sewing this onto the neckline. It's kind of like, if you imagine encasing the neck in a bias binding or something like that, it's the same kind of idea. It's just wide enough that it is a stand collar, you know? But I'm gonna clip the curves of that neckline here now that this is sewn on. Again, I just sewed the black side to the garment and then the red side is left free here. The inside of the collar, I will fold to cover up all that seam allowance. All the seam allowance gets like pushed and pressed and prodded up into the collar itself, which again, gives the collar a little bit more structure even though I don't have any interfacing in here. I'm again, not worried about it. It's two layers of sateen. This buddy will stand up on its own, no problem. Um, I think I get, I get a lot of questions about like, why don't you use more interfacing or stay stitching or things like that? And it's because I usually use quite stable fabrics. I don't use a lot of floopy or thin fabrics, which means I don't need to stabilize them very often because the fabric is stable enough, which is the nice thing about cotton sateen. But I'm just, again, folding all that seam allowance up inside here. I'm just gonna go ahead and press this back inch overlap or like seam allowance where the zipper will go in. And you can kind of get an idea what this is gonna look like. So the collar is on this side, the other side will be finished the exact same way. I'm just making sure everything is pushed and prodded properly here and is laying as smoothly as I can. I got almost a tiny little bit of a pucker on this side with a little bit of steam it kind of went away. So luckily things weren't too serious, but uh, I will hand stitch the inside of that with a slip stitch, um, the red down inside. So that will be an invisible finish and there will be no raw things anywhere anymore. 
Hopefully this makes any sense. Again, I show how to finish stand collars in other videos as well. So hopefully one of them is useful, honestly. But this side is looking good. Go ahead and do the collar on the other side here. And then I can sew my side seams together. So that's what I'm doing here, pinning my side seams of the bodice together. Again, the order of operations I use, sometimes it doesn't make any sense to me either, honestly. But let me just sew those side seams and then I can put in my sleeves. All right, press those open. All, all sewing is pressing, honestly. It's a lot of ironing, which is nice in the wintertime and really irritating in the summertime because it's already warm down here, or warm in general. And uh, in the winter, it's nice to keep my hands warm, but in the summer, I, I don't need to keep warm. I already am warm. Uh, but here's my sleeves. They look very strange, I know. Here's that tulip sleeve pattern. I'm gonna mark the center and the under, uh, like where the underarm will meet the side seam, uh, down in the center there, that dip is where that underarm is. But I want to be able to align my center of my sleeve here at the top with my shoulder seams later. Now I did put some gathering threads in the front section of the sleeve because it is puffed. Again, I make this sleeve pattern in my recent tulip sleeve video. Um, it's the last sleeve I make in that one. It's just the long, longer version which I think I do need to shorten this just a little bit. It's a little too long. Once again, it's like Goldilocks with the sleeves. <laughs> it's like I made them too short to start. Then in that video, I tried a long one and I think I need to go somewhere in between next time. So these are a little on the long side, but that's all right. Now I'm gonna match up that underarm with the si side uh, seam here on my bodice. And then I can match up the center where I have that little bit of gathering. This is the back side of the sleeve that I like to pull to the front. Tulip sleeves, you can layer them either way, either with the front side of it underneath or the back side of it underneath. I like having the back side come onto the front and overlap because I think it shows the shape of the tulip, shape, tulip sleeve more from the front, which I think is nice. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And again, I'm just spacing out my gathers as need be to make these buddies fit inside of here. The nice thing about setting in tulip sleeves is because they are overlapped, if things are a tiny bit off, you'll never know. Um, you know, it's it would be fine. I'm just me measuring the other side to make sure I have my gathering spaced the way I did the first time. Once again, I set the first sleeve in, and then now I'm filming myself do the second sleeve here with all of these bajillion pins over on this machine. And yes, I am sewing over them. Um, I get <laughs> comments about people saying, you always mention that you sew over your pins. It's fine. Stop talking about it. And it's like either I say, yes, I sew over my pins. I'm sorry that I'm not sorry. Or people will tell me you shouldn't sew over your pins in the comments. So like either way, I'm bound to get comments about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> for people who are tired of hearing me say, yes, I sew over my pins, I'm sorry. And for people who are like, oh my God, you're sewing over your pins. Yes, I know, I, I do. It never results in catastrophic results for me. If anything, it just makes my life a little bit easier. And anything that makes my life easier, I am lazy enough that I'm willing to go for it. But now that my sleeves are set in, I'm going to press all that kind of bulky seam allowance from sewing these on into the interior of the sleeve. So I'm using some steam and my uh, tailor's ham here to press the seam allowance outwards. So it like helps the puff of my sleeve get even more puffed, if that makes any sense. I don't want the seam allowance on the uh, like garment side. I like it to be inside the sleeve. So I'm just like pushing it in there and hoping that it helps to puff things out even more. This works even better in a non-layered sleeve. Um, and when I'm fully lining something, that's not how I do it. But for this sort of thing, I like to use the seam allowance is extra puff. And I am sewing the skirt to the bodice together at the waist now. Finally, the two can become one now that the bodice has its sleeves and is otherwise finished. And then I will sew from where, this is like a, that's my waist seam on the left-hand side here, but I'm sewing from the bottom of where my zipper will be to the top of my slit along the back, like so. So I'm just sewing this like 10 inch section. That's like the lower, from the bum down to the slit basically. And then the backs of this are turned underneath one inch on either side which is my back seam allowance on my garments that I leave myself. And because this is a nice finished edge, I can just pin it right next to my zipper teeth because on the right-hand side of my zipper back here, I'm gonna sew this down right next to the zipper teeth. If you've never seen me do a lapped zipper, I do them kind of weirdly. <laughs> uh, I really should just start hand sewing my zippers. I think it would give me a nicer finish, um, but I'm, again, an impatient human, so yeah. But I'm just gonna stitch this down over the machine using my zipper foot. This shot is not so bad, but later the, <laughs> when I was, going through this footage to try and edit this video and looking at the footage I got of me sewing the left side of this, it's just a joke. So I apologize in advance for not showing the zipper very well, which again, if you're new here, hi, I don't often show the zipper in full detail. 
Zippers for me are kind of still, even after hundreds of them, a pain in the arse. So when I'm doing the sewing, I'm not like hyper concentrating on filming properly. I'm hyper concentrating on not messing up the zipper, sadly enough. But I'm getting this red zipper into the red center back of this. It's funny because it's mostly a black dress, but I, of course, where the zipper is is red. And so I used a red zipper for this. I do think this was my last dark red zipper. So if I need to make anything else red, I'm going to have to grab some more red zippers to have in stock. But now that that first side is done, I can overlap the other side just over those zipper teeth so it covers them up. And then I will stitch this side down. Uh, again, this is a lapped zipper as opposed to a centered zipper. Um, centered or railroaded zippers are, of course, another option. Or something like this might be fun, actually, with an exposed zipper even. But I just use lapped zippers in almost everything. And you can see, this is the shot I'm talking about. Wow, thank you so much. The amount of clarity we have in understanding what's happening is so high. Um, yeah, it's mostly just my arm, which no one wants to look at, especially when it's all bandaged like this. Good grief. But here's my finished zipper. At least it's functional. Hey. <clears throat> and then up here where my collar kind of meets in the back, I'm just going to put a couple of hook and eyes where that overlaps just a tiny bit. And then hopefully no one will notice that it splits when I have this on. But here's my zipper. There's my hook and eyes. And the only thing left for this buddy is to go ahead and give this dress a hem. Everything else is finished. The sleeve hems were done pretty early on. The collar encases everything else up here. So this is an unlined dress. All that's left is to hem this buddy. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this up a half inch and then about three quarters of an inch again. Um, so here's turning it up. Well, I guess it's almost a full inch here, huh? But I did add an inch to the hem of this, so I knew it would be nice and long. And look at me using my Taylor's clapper for once instead of just my hands. It's an idea. And here is my finished sort of summery Black Widow inspired dress for when I'm feeling really gothic in the summer and yet still need to be able to throw my dress in the wash. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this dress came together today. I think I'll be using this pattern again in the future. I really like how the neckline with the like slight stand collar turned out and that little pokey, you know how I like a dagged neckline these days. I'm very much into it. And I really like this princess seam that goes up into the neckline as well. So I can see myself using a lot of the elements of this style again in the future. And thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.